Well, we're here at what must be for us a time of sadness because we mourn the passing of someone that we know and someone that we loved. And it's natural that at this time we would feel sadness because saying goodbye, as we'll talk about in a little bit, is never easy. But you know, we've gathered here this morning to do something that goes beyond just the sadness and the grief in the morning. We've gathered here to hear the promises of God because in those promises we can find help and we can find hope just like was expressed in that song we just heard because grace is truly amazing. You know, Jesus Christ himself said, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. And according to the Apostle Paul, no one of us lives and equally no one of us dies for himself alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And remember, Jesus Christ died and came to life again to establish his lordship over the living and the dead. So let's have a word of prayer together. Almighty God, you're a heavenly Father. You love us with a love that is beyond our understanding. In fact, that love was shown by your willingness to enter our time and space as Jesus Christ. And when you did that, you brought life and immortality into our world, into our lives. We thank you that by his death, you destroyed the power of death forever. And then by that wonderful, wonderful resurrection, you open the kingdom of heaven to us all. We ask that you remind us that because he lives, because he rose, we're going to rise also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything in all creation can separate us from your love, which was expressed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our men. Now I'm going to share some passages of scripture. The first one is one you may remember from uh, childhood. A lot of people rem learn it when they're little. So as I read the 23rd Psalm, if you want to say the words with me, I want you to feel free to do it. So here the word of God first is written by the psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I want you to listen to these words from the Apostle Paul. I reckon the sufferings we now endure bear no comparison with the splendor as yet unrevealed, which is in store for us. For the created universe waits with eager expectation for God's sons and daughters to be revealed. Up to the present, we know the whole universe groans in its inner parts as if in the pangs of childbirth. Not only so, but even we, to whom the Spirit was given as the first fruits of the harvest to come, we're groaning inwardly while we wait for God to make us his sons and daughters and set our whole bodies free. For we have been saved, though only in hope. If God is on our side, who is against us? He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. And with this gift, how can he fail to lavish upon us all he has to give? Who will be the accuser of God's chosen ones? It is God who pronounces acquittal. Who can condemn? It's Christ. Christ who died and more than that was raised from death. Who is at God's right hand and indeed pleads our cause. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? 
can affliction or hardship, can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or the sword, in spite of all, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. For I am convinced that there is nothing in death or life in the realms of spirits or superhuman powers, in the world as it is or the world as it shall be, in the forces of the universe, in heights or depths, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And finally, I want you to listen to these words from John. And, and this is particularly important because what John is envisioning is, is our future, all of our future, including Betty Ann's. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and the servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Praise God for these readings from his word. You know, I don't think it's ever easy saying goodbye. And it's especially hard when you're saying goodbye to somebody that you know and, and somebody that you love. And even when you believe that you're going to see them again, that it's just a, a time of separation, it's still hard letting them go. I remember when I was a, a little boy, I grew up in Norfolk, Virginia, and my, my dad worked for the Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock. And every now and then he'd need to make a business trip up to, to Pittsburgh. Now understand, I was really small, like maybe six. And even though I knew he was only going to be gone a few days, and I knew he was coming back, and when he, was, when he came back, he'd have presents for my sister and I in his, in his suitcase. I still remember how sad it was, standing on the tarmac. Now, that's how long ago it was. By the fence, watching him walk up the steps into the plane. You see, saying goodbye is a difficult thing to do. And of course, that's especially true today, isn't it? As we say goodbye to, to Betty Ann, a woman that I think you know, you all know, cared about everyone she met. And based on what Greg told me last evening, would open her house up to any friend, no matter how strange that friend was. Man, Saying goodbye to a woman like that is hard to handle. And even though I hope you all believe that all you're facing now, like I said, is a time of separation. That's all it is. In other words, I hope you all trust that the day is coming when God's going to do what we read in John, where God's going to recreate his universe. And when that day comes, you're going to be able to join those who have passed on ahead of you in a brand new world, one where there is no more pain and and no more suffering and no more death. And even though I hope you know that you're going to see Betty Ann again, your mom again, in that wonderful world, and you'll be able to spend not a day or a week or a year, but eternity with her. Right now is difficult. Because it's always difficult to say goodbye. But I'll tell you, God didn't leave you to deal with that all by yourself. 
Because believe me, there are two things you can do. And I'm talking about doing starting right now that'll help you kind of address some of the sadness. Now, before any, I say anything else, I'm going to be really clear. There is absolutely nothing I can say that will cause the sadness to go away. She's too important. Too important to you. And I don't have that kind of power. Still, I believe there are two things y'all can do until you see her again. You see, first, you can simply believe. That's the first thing you can do. You can simply trust in God. And although I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something, often that's made way too complicated by minister types like me. I'll let you in on a secret. It is very, very simple. Now let me tell you what I mean. You can simply trust that Betty Ann was and is and we are and always will be in the hands of God. And I'm talking about in his gracious and merciful and loving hands. Now that's something we can believe. But even though there may be days when you're not sure you know, you got questions, you may even have some doubts. That doesn't change the fact that God loves you. And Jesus Christ was born and died and was raised for you. And that doesn't change the fact that you are still in God's hands. You don't have that power. God does. And that's something that y'all can believe. And you can also trust that just like God led Betty Ann through, the, through death to new life, one day he's going to do the same thing for us. Now, you remember the psalm? A couple of y'all were, were saying it along with me. I know, Greg, you were. Where it talks about God as a shepherd. Well, I'm telling you, he's already taken your mom home. That, that has been done. He's led her through the valley of the shadow of death. And when it's our time, He's going to do the exact same thing for us. And that's something else you can believe. And I'll tell you, because of that, you can trust that you're going to see Betty Ann again. You're going to see her again. And I want you to imagine that you're going to see her and it's going to be in a new heaven and it's going to be in a new earth. Not like we're in West Virginia. It's going to be a whole lot better. And of course, if heaven has them all, you know where she's going to be, right? She's going to be buying clothes and shoes and jewelry, right? Is that right? And it's going to be easy to find her because she's going to be surrounded by butterflies and she's going to be surrounded by angels, but not the little ceramic kind. No, she's going to be there. And I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you somebody else that's going to be there. Missy's going to be there, right? And Sam isn't going to need to be moping all around her room waiting for her to come home because he's going to be there too. I'm telling you, as you move through the sadness, you can believe, you can trust. And that's the first thing you do, can do until you see Betty Ann again. But you know, that's not all. You see, second, starting this afternoon, you can really intentionally remember her. Now, I'm not going to blow any smoke. I really didn't meet her until last night when I was talking to y'all. I didn't know her. But y'all did. And so starting today, you can remember. You can remember how much she loved her home but how that didn't stop her from traveling across country and to Hawaii. And I'll tell you, I think the cherry on the top of a Sunday, for crying out loud, was a trip to the Dominican Republic for Nina and Ryan's wedding. And you could see her laying out there under a palm tree. You see, this you can remember. But I'll tell you, more than that, you can also remember just how important she was to all of you here. You can do that starting right after the service. And as you remember, man, I think you need to tell the stories. You know, tell the stories. And, and don't neglect the funny ones. 
don't neglect hiding between the buildings. <laughs> you know? And I'll tell you why that's important. Because every time you tell one of those stories, you're keeping her alive, aren't you? You're keeping her alive. And, and you're doing something else, and you may not even realize it. You're keeping her alive inside of your heart, but you're passing those memories on to other folks, right? Who didn't have a chance, particularly little ones who never had a chance to know her. You see, you can simply remember. And that's the second thing you can do until you see Betty Ann again. Now, like I said, saying goodbye isn't easy. I know that. God knows that. And he doesn't expect us to do that without feeling sadness and grief. Even though we know the separation is only temporary. Now, saying goodbye hurts. But after the initial sadness eases, and it will, of course right now some of y'all may just be feeling numb, and the sadness is to come. I want to challenge you to do the two things we talked about this morning. When you leave here today, I want you to make the decision that you are going to trust God and you're going to remember Betty Ann until you see her again. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord God, right now we join your entire church. We talk about the church of the, the past and of the present to offer you all kinds of thanks and praise for everything you've done for us through Jesus Christ. Lord, you, you gave him to live and die for us. And when you did that, you showed your, your love and purpose for the entire world and demonstrated that there is absolutely no limit to that love. And then you caused him to rise from the dead. And that gives all those who trust in him the opportunity to feel a little bit of that resurrection life right now. We thank you for the assurance and hope that comes from faith. And for all those whom you have received into your eternal joy, especially today, Lord, we lift our hearts in gratitude for the life of Betty Ann, now gone from among us. We thank you for all your goodness to her during her life and for all she was to those who loved her and for everything in her life that reflects your love and your hope and your peace. In the following silence, Lord, we thank you for the life of our sister, Betty Ann. And now we bless you. That for her, all previous weakness is past and forgotten and death lies behind her, no longer to be feared. Now, Lord, comes the hard part. Lord, help us to be content to release her to you, her father and our father. Assure us that in your keeping, she is going to be fine. Your work in her complete. And for, in fact, surround us and all those who mourn today with your continuing and unending compassion. Don't let grief overwhelm your children or be without end or worse of all cause them to turn against you. Rather Lord help us travel on from this day with more peace assured of the reality of your promises. And then Lord in your good time reunite us with all those whom we have loved in that one great kingdom of your love where there'll be no more tears and no more pain and no more partings. In Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray this. Amen. The service will conclude at the cemetery.
Bravo. 